In New England, the biggest casino in the world pays out a mountain of money. It's the World Poker Finals here on the World Poker Tour. The World Poker Tour is a series of international poker tournaments featuring the biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. Six players, $6.7 million. The world's largest casino delivers a world-class payout here on the World Poker Tour. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the World Poker Tour. We're in Connecticut for the World Poker Finals. That is right. This is the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the largest casino in the world. And you know, Mike, it's our third season here, but I still get lost here. It's very big, let me tell you. <laughs> it sure is, Vince. But you know, it didn't seem like any of the players got lost. We had a record field of 674 players show up to be in this tournament. They each paid $10,000 to enter, creating a whopping prize pool of over $6.7 million. It's just incredible. And $1.5 million for the winner, plus he gets a guaranteed $25,000 dollars seat at the WPT championships at the Bellagio and that's potentially worth a lot more so it's just just big money right here well these guys are raring to go let's go down to the table and meet the players on the short stack tonight in seat number three is David the Dragon fam and this is David's third WPT final table he's starting out with 323,000 in chips starting out in fifth chip position with 964,000 in chips his tournament newcomer 35 year old temp Hutter Temp is an accountant out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Now at seat number four with 1,159,000 in chips is Costa Rican sensation Umberto Brennis. Now last week, Umberto's brother Eric won a million dollars in the Aruba Poker Classic, and Umberto is hoping it runs in the family. Starting out in third chip position with 1.2 million in chips is JC Tran. JC is a 27 year old pro from California. And this tough young gun won't be afraid to gamble it up here tonight. Okay, and speaking of gambling, in seat number six with 1,376,000 is 26-year-old Tuan Lee. Don't let the choir boy looks fool you folks. Tuan Lee is an aggressive and very unpredictable poker champion. Oh, you're right, Vance. He is fun to watch. And in seat number one with 1.7 million in chips is our chip leader, Bradley Berman. Now, Bradley's father, Lyle Berman, is in the Poker Hall of Fame. Yeah. But tonight, it's the son who's looking for his own place in poker history with a win here at Foxwoods World Poker Final Championship. Okay, it's going to be a big night here tonight. So, Mike, who do you like? Well, Vance, I'm going to go with an underdog today, a guy who's only been playing poker for two years. Twan Lee, my pick to win. Very interesting. I'm going with Umberto. Let's see what happens. Okay, we can shuffle up and start dealing, please. Well, here we go. The World Poker Finals at Foxwoods about to get underway. And Vince with 674 entries. This is the largest event in the history of the World Poker Tour. It is just incredible. Just a couple seasons back on the World Poker Tour, we only had 89 players play here at Foxwoods. Yeah, just incredible growth that we've witnessed at literally every venue out here on the World Poker Tour. Don't forget the champion's going to take 1.5 million. All right, action is going to be on David Pham. He looks at an ace five offsuit. Well, he is an expert poker player, a former tournament player of the year. He caps his cards here, Vince. Looks like he's interested in playing this pot. He's the short stack. Doesn't have a whole lot of chips. Well, he's under the gun, as we say. Meaning he's got a fire first, and he's doing it right here. 64,000. Right in to Umberto Brennis, who peaks at a jack six. Umberto looks like he just stepped off the set of Singing in the Rain. <laughs> And he throws this way. JC folds. And now he's around to Tuan Lee. He's got Jack eight of diamonds. The button in front of him. Yep. Sort of a creative starting hand. And well, he's got good chips. He's in good position, but he opts to fold. Into the chip leader, Bradley Berman. He's gone out. Round to Temp Hutter, who looks down at Ace King. He's got big slick and the big blind. The accountant takes his time. Goes into a little acting job here. Well, he's just trying to figure out what to do. It cost him 40000 more to call the raise. I'll raise. And he's going to raise it. Gonna Ouch raise. for David Pham. He's thinking to himself, gee, I almost got away with this bluff. This guy on my right has to push it up. 120 more. $120,000 more. Mm. And don't forget, David Pham was the first one to act, usually in that place. 
you get a lot of respect. Well, you normally have a strong hand yeah. when you raise under the gun. He knows temp, figured that out, and yet has still re-raised him, so he's got to put him on a strong hand here. you got to think so. And he is going to lay it down. So chalk one up to Temp Hutter. Oh, man, the guy from Virginia, the guy with a real job, watches the World Poker Tour, says, I'm going to take a shot, puts up his money, and now he's going after $1.5 Truly life-changing money. My name is Temperance Hutter. People call me Temp. I ran out of clothes before I got here. So I had to go out and buy another shirt and some underwear yesterday because I'm not supposed to be here this long. Well, one of the great things about the World Poker Tour is that anyone can come out and play in these events. Here we have Tim Hutter, who drove up here from Virginia, put up his 10,000 events. The guy's got a great shot to win this tournament. It is exciting. It's got to be for Tim Hutter. Once again, we are playing No Limit Hold'em, the game that could make you or break you. Two cards down, five in the middle to make your best five-card poker hand. Action's going to be on David Pham. Looks down at ace nine off suit. Pretty solid starting hand. Well, I got about 200,000 left. Peaks hit Umberto. Nice. He is going to raise it. Yes, he is. He's going to get aggressive. It comes in for 90,000. 90,000 total bet, guys. Umberto Brennis looks down at a miserable little 10 3 offsuit. Folds his hand. There's the JC. David, how and much you have Quan Lee asking David how many chips he has. All right, he should because he has ace four spades and the button in front of him. Pretty solid starting hand. Exactly. But Quan Lee should recognize here that even though David bet 90,000, he's essentially. Bet all his chips because he's not going to lay his hand down if somebody re-raises him. He'll be getting over three to one odds on his money. He is essentially pot committed here. Tuan Lee, a gambling style player, has a lot of chips. Is he going to pull the trigger here? Looks like he is, Vince. Raise. Well, he is going to raise it. Oh, boy. Well, he's going to set the dragon in here. Now, Brad quickly going out with the ace nine. Now it's around a temp. Temp's got eight seven of spades. It's 200,000 to him to call, so he opts to lay it down, but the dragon quickly calls. Get lucky. He is going to love what he sees, Vance. He's got ace nine. His opponent's got ace four. What a great spot for the dragon to double up. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back from Foxwoods here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to Foxwoods, where the action is fast and furious. On the second hand of the tournament, David the Dragon Fam is all in with ace nine versus Tuan Lee's ace four. Will the dragon breathe fire, or will he go down in flames? So right now, David the Dragon fam in great position to double up. Whether you win the pot or not, you got to love to have an opportunity to win a big pot when you're dominating your opponent like this. Well, here we go with the flop. Oh, a four right in the door. Oh, just a disaster here for the dragon. Remember, we saw him a couple weeks ago on the World That's Poker Tour where he finished third to Carlos Mortensen when he played a monster pot against Carlos, got very unlucky and lost that pot. Will it be deja vu here again tonight, or will he double up and fight back to victory? Oh, the dragon's circling the drain right now. Here's the turn. Well, a seven comes off. Not going to help the dragon there. He needs a nine to win this pot. He'll get a tie if an ace or a ten comes up. Oh, you got a feel for David right now. Can he do it? And here comes the river. It's a six. Sorry, David. And that's going to do it for David the Dragon Fam. He is going to be our sixth place finisher. And Vince, again, David the Dragon Fam, very unlucky at this final table. He had Carlos Mortensen in the same situation, but that was for a $7 million pot that he lost. This time, for all his money, he's outdrawn ace-nine against ace-four. Wow. Just amazing. 
Well, Twan Lee opted to gamble with the ace four spades there, Vance, and it paid off in spades for him. And with that, he is a massive chip leader, close to 2.2 million. Twan Lee, a 26-year-old who's only been playing poker for a couple years, taking control of the final five here. I think my strongest strength is not being afraid to put all the money in with any hand. You know, it's uh, no limit. You really don't need cards to win. Tuan is very, very dangerous. He is fearless. It seems like we're playing for 10 bucks, not 1.5 million. I play a lot of poker, probably 70, 80 hours a week. It's paying off financially, but as far as emotionally and stressful, it's not an easy job. I promised my friends that if I made a substantial amount of money, I won't play poker for the rest of my life. I want to stop playing by the time I'm uh, 30 years old. A substantial amount of money to me is eight figures. If I win today, I would get seven figures, so I just have to win about 10 more of these. And as you can see, folks, he's an action player. He is not afraid to mix it up. Tuan Lee. He's picked up a nice hand, ace queen. And this is a guy that doesn't necessarily need a nice hand to bet. Raise. He's going to raise it, makes it 84,000 to go. And it's to Brad right now, who's kind of got that Civil War look going on tonight. Brad put down the musket. No temp peeks down at nothing. The four deuce, he opts to fool. Round to Umberto. He's got queen eight of diamonds this time. A little money already invested in the pot. It's the kind of hand you like to play sometimes against aggressive players, because if you hit the flop, they're going to keep betting at you, and you're going to make some money. Not going to do it, though. But Humberto opts to fold it. It is on J.C. Tran, who's got ace five of diamonds. He's going to hand that against a guy like Tuan. You could very well think is the best hand. Short stack at the table with close to 700,000, but he's going to call it. Tuan, does his play remind you a little bit of Gus Hansen, you know, that likes to get in there and mix it up all the time? This is true. Here's the flop. Oh, good for JC. He's flopped a pair of fives here. But he's going to check it. Tuan taking a quick glance at JC, also checks. On to the turn. Well, it's the king of clubs. So far, JC with the best hand with two fives. But notice that Tuan has now made a flush draw. He is the queen of clubs. And look at him. He is just seeing the possibilities. 150. And he's going to bet the two fives. 150,000 by JC. Right into Tuan Lee. What's going through Tuan's mind here is, is his ace-queen the best hand right now? Well, he is going to call. Folks, this guy's got gamble in his blood. He's going to try to snap off a queen or a club here. That's all he can win this pot with, unless he opts to bluff at the river. River card coming up. And it is the club. Gets a club. He does get the flush. Oh, what a miserable card there for JC. Poor JC. <laughs> Well, J.C.'s checked it. Oh. And here comes Twan firing chips at the pot bets, 130000 trying to get in a little value bet. But if your opponent doesn't have a flush, very unlikely you're going to get called here. Uh. And J.C. does lay down the hand. So a gambling call on 4th Street by Twan pays off again. Which player is going to win that $1.5 million first prize? We'll find out when we return on the World Poker Tour. Everybody's got to have a lot of luck to win, so people get good cards, and if they win big pots with them, that's part of the game. Next Wednesday. Oh, oh yeah. Umberto's back. Will he be the big winner at the Bellagio? Drama queen. Watch the best in the game battle on the World Poker Tour. All new next Wednesday at 9 on the Travel Channel.
Welcome back to the World Poker Finals. I'm here with Chris McCormick, our seventh place finisher. How does it feel watching these guys right now? Um, I, mean, I would love to be playing at the final table with them, but all in all, this is my first main event, so I'm really happy with how I played. All right, so who do you think is going to win? Uh, Tuan's gone off to a great start. He's got a chip lead now, and the shorter the table gets, the more to his advantage. He's a very aggressive player. Mm. All right, let's get back to the action. So right now, everything going Tuan Lee's way, winning every single pot he's played so far. Oh boy, and he plays fast, Mike, and he is on the left of J.C. Tran, and that is a bad thing to happen for J.C. He's got a wild man on his left with a ton of chips. Action's gonna be on Humberto Brennis. Humberto Brennis, very quiet so far. Now he's a great table talker once it gets going. This time he looks at an ace jack off suit. Pretty good starting hand for Humberto. Well, he gives it the thumbs up. That means he's gonna raise it. And look at JC on his left. Studying him intently here. You do that because you can pick up information on the strength of your opponent's hand sometimes. So Humberto makes it 75,000 to go. JC's got ace 10 in his hand. JC so far marching like he's on two left feet here at this final table. Nothing going right for him. He's on the short stack. He's got ace 10 here. Little does he know, Humberto has ace jack. Well, he is going to raise it. Come on, in. Oh, he's going to go all the way with it. Yep, comes over the top for about 460000 all his money. And to Tuan Lee now. Tuan's got 8-5, throws it away quickly. Brad Berman going out. Around to Tamp. He's got 9-7 off suit. Not interested, and it's back to Umberto. And what a decision he's faced with. What's up, man? Nearly a $400,000 raise. He's seen so far that nothing's gone JC's way here at this final table. I'll tell you, JC would take three big gulps right now if he knew what Humberto had. Thank you for that. Well, Humberto says, I keep you alive. Oh, boy, he did. So J.C. going to feel good about taking down his first pot here today. Uh, and he's really going to feel good when he sees that Humberto laid down an ace jack. Wow, I get to win. I thought this game was fixed. He is one happy guy. He finally turns it around. I really wanted to make a final table at the WPT because at the LA Poker Classic in Commerce, I finished seventh, and that hurt a lot because I felt like I deserved to be there. And I really wanted to be there, so... I knew the next time I'm playing any WPT event, I'm going to play my heart out. Well, J.C. Tran needed that break, Vince. That was his first pot, and he won it with the worst hand. Yes, he did, but well played. And right now, the antis and blinds are going up. We're talking about an ante of $5,000, with the blinds being twenty and 40000 Well, that means that all these players put in 85000 per round here, whether you play a pot or not. Okay, the action's going to be on Bradley Berman. Straight off the Civil War fields. Looks down at his hand. He sees the Motown hand. Jack five. Throws it away. Now it's on Temp Hutter, who has Jack nine. Lays it down. Round to Humberto. Button in front of him and a King Deuce in his hand. Lays it down. And JC with a pair of threes limps in in the small blind, as we say. He just calls the bet. But right behind him, Tuan Lee with a legitimate pair of sixes wired. What's he going to do with it? Right. Tuan's going to have none of it. He's going to raise him. Oh, boy, this is getting personal between these Can two. Drag that in? Just a guy you don't want to be in the hand with, too. Well, okay. he's going to raise it 120000 Now, what do you do with your two threes? If you're J.C. here. I raise. J.C. is going to re-raise him here. Oh, you smack him back if you're J.C. I'm all in. He's going all in with it. Over 600,000 here. He makes the massive re-raise, puts it all on the line. 
into his arch rival, Tuan Lee. Well, what's going through Tuan's mind is, hey, the guy limped in. Is he trapping me with a monster hand here? Did he want me to raise it, or is he making a move here? If he makes this call, this pot will have well over a million dollars in it. Well, he's going to do it. Well, he's doing it. Gambling Twan has looked him up, and is he ever going to love to see this hand? Two sixes against two threes. J.C. Tran sickened by seeing a pair of sixes out in front of him. Well, some days you just shouldn't play pots against other guys, it looks like. Well, that is this is truth. one of those days for J.C. But there are five cards to come. He can get lucky. Well, certainly he can. Right now, Twan Lee in a dominating position to knock J.C. Tran out. Thanks. You can double me up. Pair over pair. 1.5 million for the champion here. So here comes the flop. Well, flop comes king, queen, nine. No help for J.C. so far. J.C. Tran is looking for threes right now, I can tell you. He needs one badly. Oh, he is in very grave condition right now. Two cards to come. Here's the turn. And it's a douche. No help for J.C. No, nope. close but no cigar. And right now, J.C. Tran must catch a three ball here to stay alive in this tournament. Last card coming up. Don't do it. He doesn't get it. And eight comes off. J.C. Tran out in fifth place. Going to pick up 353000 Well, Vince, he took $1,000, won a single table tournament to win his entry into this event. He's taken home over $350,000. So a nice week here for J.C. Tran. Nice call, Juan. Nice yeah, call. Good. I mean, it looked like he might have trapped me. You know, wasn't it? Nice call. Wow, $350,000, though. You're walking away with a lot of money. It's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. $350,000 is my biggest win so far, so I can't complain. But uh, $1.5 million would have been nice. But uh, there's many more tournaments, and uh, I'll be back. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. We are down to four. Who's going to become the champion of Foxwoods? Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more on the World Poker Tour. Everything that you might need is under one roof here at Foxwoods. We are our own little city, and you could probably go for days and days and not see all of it. We've really created a satellite program, I think, that is unique in the industry. We actually started running these satellites about five or six months ago, 24 hours a day, almost seven days a week, which equates into over 50,000 entries into these satellites. Over 250 players who are in this tournament have qualified through satellites. I would never be able to put down $10,000 into this tournament, so it definitely gives everyone a chance. For $60, a player can jump right in. 60 in, 28,000 out. I love satellites. Well, we were at Foxwoods, and Mike, you know, Foxwoods is really known around the world for its unmatched system of satellite tournaments. They're great. Well, you're right, Vince. The satellites truly are amazing here. All year long, for only $60, you have a chance to win over a million and a half dollars. That's true, and that's 25,000 times your money. This is exciting. Let's get back to the table. Here we go. Right now, our current chip leader is Tuan Lee with a little over three million. Bradley Berman in second place with over a million and a half. And Humberto Brennis and Tim Hunter both have over a million, so it's still anybody's game. Don't forget the winner will become a millionaire, $1.5 million. And it is going to be on the CPA, Tim Hunter. Looks like a king deuce, he folds. Humberto Brennis with the button in front of him has an ace deuce in his hand. Humberto in a disadvantageous position in terms of chip count because the two guys in his blinds both have more chips than he does. There is no problem here. He is going to raise it. Looks like 140,000. He's going to open up his game four-handed into Tuan, who's got a miserable-looking 8-3 offsuit. Now look at him. What is he thinking about, Vince? This guy would call a telemarketer. How much you got, Costa Rica? 
Amazing. Look at him trying to size up how many chips Humberto has. Folks, he has an 8-3 offsuit, remember? Just about the very worst hand possible in poker. This isn't nothing for you. You're a lucky man. I like that. All right, you take it. Well, oh, that's got to hurt him. He gives it up. <laughs> throw a hand away. But now we're around to Bradley Berman, who's got ace nine of spades and says he's going to raise it. Wow, I play good. Welcome to the game, Bradley. Wow. Call, oh, what is it, 140? Out of the shadows, Bradley Berman. He's raised it 260,000. He's made it 400,000 to go. Oh, my God. We will use a problem. I play with him. Not with you. And Umberto says, I would have played with Tuan, but you, that's another story. The perception at the table of Bradley Berman being solid and tight, throwing away a lot of hands, well, could potentially know. pay off for him here. First time you move. And Burton was saying, the first time you moved. Trying to figure out his opponent. Humberto well, fully understands the aspect of playing certain hands against some players and other hands against other players. Now look at that. That is a true poker face, though. Yeah, he's like a statue, a Civil War statue. Okay. Humberto can get nothing. He shows an ace and throws it away. Very well done. Well, give Bradley Berman credit there for coming over the top of Humberto. Vince, he's got the bloodlines of a poker player. His father, Lyle Berman, in the Poker Hall of Fame. He's in the audience having a great time rooting on his son. Bradley Berman still in good shape here with four players left. A great chance to take this title. It's great that my father is a world-class poker player, but through my whole life, I've always tried to just blaze my own trail. If I win, it's because I played hard and it's because I deserve it. Well, what's going to be interesting, Mike, is now that we're down to four-handed play, you got a guy like Tuan Lee, who is very aggressive, but can these other conservative players so far, like Bradley and Temp, change gears and go into a more aggressive style? Well, good point, Vance. They're going to have to if they want to win this title. I don't know if they can, but I certainly know Humberto can. There's no question about that. He's got all gears to his game. Okay, well, action's going to be back on the chip leader, Tuan Lee. And this time he's picked up a monster hand, Vance. Ace King, he's got big slick. Oh, that is a tremendous hand. Extra tremendous for a guy like Tuan Lee. The reason it's good for him is because most of the time they think he's stealing the pot and he doesn't have a hand. So when he gets a hand, nobody puts him on one. Raise. And he is going to raise it, of course. Let's see how much. It's like 170,000. Nice solid raise right into Bradley Berman. Looks at his oh, hand. Oh, two kings he's got, Vince. Oh, he's got a gigantic hand. King's wired. And a ton of chips in front of him. How much is that? I raise. You better believe it, Bradley. Notice Twan standing up and looking down at him. He popped out of his chair like so a jack in the box. Now that's an indication he's got a hand there. It would tell me I was playing in the table. 400 more. Ooh, 400,000 more. Very solid re raise. Into temp. Top of. He's got a wired pair of threes. Well, it's raised and re raised by the chip leaders. Two threes, a very easy hand to get away from. Now back to Umberto. Set a 6 4. He's not getting in the middle of this battle. So he gets out of the way. Now we have our two chip leaders. Both have a monster hand. What's going to happen? Buckle up here, folks. You're liable to see some serious fireworks. Oh, look at this, Tuan Lee. Oh, he's getting out the heavy artillery vents. He says, how much have you got down there? Bradley loves to hear that. He's just begging for a raise now. A misstep by Tuan. 1.160. A lot of chips still. Raise. Oh, boy. He's he going to raise, raise it. it. 
How much? Well, he's essentially setting Bradley all in right here. Now, Brad's saying, well, is this guy possibly have a pair of aces? Doubtful. You got to love your kings. I'm all in. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's got to do it, especially against a guy like Tuan Lee. What a great position for Brad to double up here. Wow. What a showdown this is. A three and a half million dollar pot here, folks. It's ace king for Twan, two kings for Bradley. Great opportunity to double up and become our chip leader for Bradley. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Finals. We have a major confrontation going on right now. Bradley Berman with two kings, right. Twan Lee with ace king for a three and a half million dollar pot. Bradley waiting for this type of opportunity to yep. double up against the chip leader. He would become the chip leader if he should have his hand hold up here. Good luck, sir. Well, Bradley says good luck. You know he doesn't mean that. Everyone on their feet here. Yes, far and away, the biggest pot of the night. Here Here's comes the flop. a flop. Well, it's 10-10 deuce. And so far, Bradley Berman out in front with the Kings. Beautiful flop for him. In the meantime, proud Papa Lyle Berman in the audience, having to sweat out two more cards. Here comes the turn. Well, it's an eight. So far, so good for Bradley Berman. We're down to our last card, and right now, Twan Lee must catch an ace to win this pot. If Bradley Berman can dodge a bullet, he will be the substantial chip leader at this table. Here comes the river card. Oh! Wow! Unbelievable! Fitz, he's hit the ace at the river. You got to feel the pain for Bradley Berman. Bradley nodding. He knows that's poker, but you can feel his heart fall on the floor. Losing to an ace at the river. Unbelievable. What a bad beat for Bradley Berman right there. That is as bad as it ever gets. Oh. Well, <laughs> Humberto Prentice walking over and trying to rub some of that luck off of Tuan Lee onto himself there. Well, right now we are down to three, Mike. Juan Lee now the monster chip leader here with nearly five million in chips. Tampa and Humberto both with just slightly less than a million. Oh, Tuan Lee just rolling over this field. Let's see if it'll continue. Action's on temp. CPA out of Virginia this time picks up a big hand. He's got ace, ten of clubs. Nice starting hand, three-handed especially. Well, you're right. In a three-handed game, it's certainly a hand that you're going to play, especially in position on the button. Looks like Temp's getting out some raisin chips. Let's see what he does. One twenty. And he is going to do it. Makes it one hundred and twenty thousand. Into Umberto. Umberto's got King Deuce of clubs. Lays it down. Look at this, Tuan Lee with a pair of eights. Oh, he's got some octopuses there. Wired pair of eights. Well. That's cab fare to you. Come on. We have left temp. Oh boy. Look at that. Two, four, five, six, seven. Temp says it's cab fare. Well, I got news for you. It's going to go like up that. to limo fare here, it looks like. CPA trash talking here. I don't think it's working. Raise. He is going to raise it. Boy, an angry raise at that. <laughs> I'm all in. Look at Temp. All in, he says, I'm all in. Temp trying to take it in stride there. And right now, Temp's saying, why'd I say anything? Huh? Well, Humberto over there, high-fiving the crowd here, sort of backing into possibly second place at worst. Really? If indeed You're Temp right? plays this pot and loses it. You got a big hand? It's the best hand. He just had his king. Well, Tim, asking some questions now. Can you pick up another big one? I like my hand. Trying to pry information from Twan to see what kind of hand he has. You want me to call? 
<laughs> and how? No. That answer is an obvious yes. And the accountant just going to crunch the numbers right now. I really want to gamble with you. And he says, I want to gamble with you. All you got to do, Tampa, is put your chips out there. Don't let the looks confuse you about Tampa. It looks like the guy that could work the money basket at church, but believe me, he's some gambler. <laughs> Tampa handles those chips pretty good for an accountant, I'll tell you that. Got a little pair? <laughs> pair sevens or something? Look at that. He's got a pretty good read on the situation. It certainly does. He says you have a pair of sevens. We know he has a pair of eights. Oh, I you can just feel his migraine headache right now, can't you? <laughs> 674 players battled to this position. We're down to three. You want me to gamble with you? It's getting yeah. intimate hey. now. Ask Antoine if you want to gamble with him. Now, that's not a question you should be asking that guy. Uh, he doesn't care. Come on in, mix it up. If I lose a pot, I'm going to have four million in chips. Do what you like. Oh, boy. Well, he does lay it down. Choosing to take another battle on. Well, in truth, he's wondering, did I make the right play there? He doesn't know for sure if he made a good play or a bad one. Well, most poker players think that a big starting hand is usually a good thing. But as Shauna Hyde is about to tell us, bigger isn't always better. That's the subject of this week's Poker Corner. If you think the best two starting cards in Texas Hold'em are a pair of aces, you're right. But they don't always spell success. For many pros, big cards mean big trouble. I hate two queens with a passion. Beware the ace king. Ace queen, nothing but trouble. Don't play them. Throw them away. They'll save a lot of money. There are two main threats to monster cards, small pairs and suited connectors. By playing the smaller cards against opponents you know are playing big cards, there's a definite advantage to that, especially when you have a lot of chips. Because if you turn your hand, you can beat the big cards and win a giant pot. And if you miss your hand after a flop, it's easy to throw away. It's always better to start with big cards. The problem is, it's tough to get away from if you tend to hang on to it too long. I'd be embarrassed to lay this hand down on camera. Ace King or Ace Queen may look dreamy at first, but remember, there's still an underdog to any pair. Phil Ivey is all in with Ace Queen. He's up against Josh Arias, two threes. Oh, it's a three. He's made three of a kind. Phil Ivey is out in sixth place. This is a bad hand. The books still recommend to get your money in pre-flop with a big hand. But beware, okay. sometimes the bigger they are, the harder they oh fall. My goodness. Wow, I have to draw to running 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, that middle pair sure worked out well for Twan Lee. But Vince, you know the temp hunter is wondering if his ace-10 of clubs was good or not. He will always wonder. But you know, you can only bluff a good player. Bad players will call everything and anything. Well, with the blinds and antes, these players are putting in 75,000 every three hands, Vince. Give me some cards. Well, that means that you've got to get in there and mix it up soon here, Here's or you're going to get whittled away. You're right about that. Very expensive. And right now, Tuan Lee with close to $5 million. Action's going to be on him. Let's see what he does. He looks down at an 8-4 of hearts. Feeling like King Tut over there with all those chips. Well, how can you blame him? He's won every pot he's played here tonight. And he's going to bump it up again. Makes it 120,000 to go. Every time. Into Temp huh? Hutter. Oh, temp. hallelujah for Temp. He's picked up Ace Queen of Hearts. Very solid hand. This could be revenge time for you, Temp. Oh, now he's going through a little routine here. Like, what do I do now? Oh, boy. Well, folks, when you're the short stack at the tournament, you pick up Ace Queen of Hearts in a three handed game. Just can't imagine you're not going to play it. Well, he's got an interesting acting style. He takes his time, he milks it. I'm going to raise. He is going to raise it. So he's coming over the top of Twan Lee here. Let's see how much. He's got a little bit less than 800,000 in chips altogether. 300 more. 300,000. Nice strong raise. Now 
First, you got Umberto. Contend with. Let's see what Umberto has. I look down at A7 of Spade here. Also a nice starting hand, except for a raise and a re-raise. That's right. Because it's been raised and re-raised, it's usually a hand you get away from. That's what Umberto does there. Can you pull in the 120. Back to Tuan, who started this mess with his silly little 8 4. He's looking to see how much his opponent has here. He's been raised 300,000. But notice the temp only has about 350,000 left. So what that should tell Tuan is that even if he plays a raise of this pot, essentially he's going to be putting in all the chips. There's no way temp is going to lay this hand down if Tuan moves in on it. Here. Yeah, you're right. He can't bomb him out of there. He's got to know right, that. 350, 355 more if you want to do it. This is the kind of hand that you might call a $300,000 raise if your opponent had several million left where you could win substantial money if you hit your hand. It's not the kind of hand you want to race with or show down with and just hope you get lucky and win the pot, I wouldn't think. But I'm not Tuan Lee. Are we dancing? Are you calling? I'll call. He's calling. He He's going to call it. He likes the action. It's worked for him tonight so far. Let's see if this pays off. So here comes the flop. It's 9-6-5. Now that does give Twan a gut shot straight draw, but Temp moves all in in front of him. Flop didn't help him, but we know he's still out in front with his ace queen. I can't blame Temp. I'd have gone all in no matter what came out there also. Cab fare to you. That's another reason that Twan's call was so weird in my mind. Because he doesn't even get to act first where he can bet first to put Temp in a thinking position. Well, it's a potential tactical error here, but Twan has an inside straight draw. He's got to pay off a little bit more. He can get to see two more cards and maybe outdraw and bust this kid. Wow. Well, maybe he just feels like he's on a big rush. Right now he can catch anything. That's why he called with a 4-8. Maybe he thinks he can hit the gut shot straight. He's going for it here, Vince. He is going to pay it off. He's got a problem. No, I got eight high. Eight. He yeah, what? Eight high. <laughs> Look at Tim. He He's can't believe his opponent's turned over an eight four here. Me with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame him for being a little shocked about it. Absolutely stunned. He calls a 300,000 raise with four eight. Meantime, you could get outdrawn. Just ask Bradley Berman. <laughs> he sure can. He can catch a four, a seven, or an eight. <laughs> I should have went all in before the fall. Yeah. All right, it's up to Twan Lee. Now Deuce Three comes off. Two. Three is good, two. Uh, and that gives Twan four more outs. If he catches a three now, he will win this pot. So now he needs a three, a four, a seven, or an eight. Last card coming up. Here it is. Paint. Well, it's an ace. So there you have it. Temp Hutter doubling up here off the chip leader, Twan Lee. Supposed to show you patience paid off. I guess I got to say, I believe that's the first misstep that Twan has had tonight. Twan, you scared the hell out of me when you called that back. Well, I think it's the first misstep that he didn't outdraw his opponent. There's no like it. The stakes are huge, and so is the excitement. Don't go away. Welcome back to Connecticut and the Foxwoods World Poker Finals. I'm Shauna Hyatt, and here's a look back at the exciting action so far. There's a poker brawl at Foxwoods as wildly aggressive Tuan Lee came out swinging. With a quick one-two, he knocked out poker champs David the Dragon Fam and J.C. Tran. Then Tuan took out early chip leader Bradley Berman. Good luck, sir with a sucker punch on the river. Yeah! Oh! Wow! Unbelievable! Tuan is left in the ring with two others, and the gloves are off. He's up against a Costa Rican great and a mild-mannered tax accountant. Get out of here. You're calling me with that? Who's next to hit the canvas? 
and who will win the WPT title and the $1.5 million in cash. Welcome back to the final table of the largest WPT tournament yet. Back to the felt where poker players are battling it out for life-changing money. Here we go. Now, action back on Tuan Lee. This time he looks down at a queen nine offsuit. He is in great rhythm right now. And once again, he's getting out the chips. It looks like to raise. Yes, it does. And he is going to raise it. Makes it 90,000 to go. Into temp, Hutter. This time temp peeks down at a six deuce. Very dismal hand. Slight chuckle, throws it away. Look at this, Humberto oh. Brennis has picked up two kings. Oh, just a gigantic hand. Julio Iglesias song's going off in his head right now. Trying to contain his excitement though. They were going off in Bradley Berman's head too. Till he played the Kings and then walked out of the arena right after that hand. Race. Oh, and he's gonna do the raise. Let's see how much he's gonna raise it. We just tuned in. The orange chips are worth ten thousand. The aqua ones are five thousand. Now, when you have a big hand like that, you don't want to be too strong. You don't want to be too soft. You want the right increment. Well, right here, a hundred and eighty thousand dollar re-raise by Umberto Brennis. Into Tuan, who has got a very unspectacular queen nine. Now, Tuan has been noticing. Humberto has not played that many pots here today. And it looks like he's going to call this. Yes, he is. is right? He just does not like to lay down a hand, folks. And right now, he could be heading for quicksand here. Humberto Brennis with two kings. Tuan Lee with the queen nine. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, look at this. Juan Lee acts like he's getting his chips out to set him all in. And Humberto say, all in. All right. Oh, he's threatening that he's going to go all in no matter what he says. Look, he's going to get a running start here. Well, the flop comes 10 7 4. All right, sir. Humberto say, all in. And all in by Humberto. Well, Juan Lee quickly folds. Oh, he gets out of the way. Notice Eric Brennis, Humberto's brother in the crowd, the guy we saw win last week on the tour. Oh, they are amazing poker family, the Brennises. What a story we've got developing here. We could have two guys in the same family win consecutive weeks on the World Poker Tour. It is just incredible. So Humberto Brennis trying to battle his way back into this match. Still in third place, with about 885,000. Juan Lee, our chip leader with over 4 million. Temp Hunter in second place, 1.8 million. Winner once again going to take home 1.5 million dollars. Action's going to be on Tuan Lee. This time he's got a big hand, Ace Queen of Clubs. Yes, he does. Now the blinds have gone up to 30 and 60 thousand with the 10 thousand dollar ante. It is very expensive to play right now. Well, notice what's happened here. He's made it 135,000 to go. Temp looks at 10-8. He folds. So this is not a big raise by Tuan Lee. Back into Umberto. Now, Umberto in the big blind has 40,000 out there. He's picked up a 9-7 of hearts. How much more? That's a creative kind of hand. Well, he says, how much more? It's only 75,000 more to call. Well, he's going to play the rush, it looks like. Well, I don't blame him. There's over 250000 in the pot. Cost him 75000 more to call. He does so. Here's our flop. Well, the flop is 10-A deuce. That gives an open-ended straight draw to Umberto. Yes, it does. Does not hit uh Oh, he's put up the stop sign, Vance. Look what's coming here. He's going to get the running start of the all-in play again, it looks like. Yes, he does. Oh, he is going to do it. Oh, boy, he's going to give us a free dance, too. Look at this, Vince. High five in the crowd, indicating he's got a monster here. Oh, we know he would love this man, Tuan, to go away. All in for anybody that missed it. <laughs> well, this is what we call a semi-bluff, folks. He made that bet to try to win this pot right now, but even if his opponent calls, he's going to have outs to win this pot. Well, it's just the brilliance of this guy doing it two times in a row. One time he had a big hand, this time he has 
a hand that is not made yet. Okay, Tuan's gonna lay it down. The sneakiness and craftiness of Umberto's gonna work, and he's gonna show the hand. He's gonna show the seven and nine of the Look at Tuan shaking his head no here. Oh, the mind game. Oh, now he wants to rabbit hunt, see if he would have won the pot. There we go. Sit down, Humberto. You've won. Oh, it's an absolute brilliant battle of psychology going on here. Battle of wits. Well, Tuan Lee getting outplayed there, Rent. A nice little rush going on for Umberto. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from Foxwoods on the World Poker Tour, the show that launched the sport. He did it! At the Invitational in Los Angeles. I finished second. I don't like to finish second.